So yeah, my name is Jan Jungman. I'm principal developer evangelist at ARM. I run a, a developer experience team where we go into the market, not just LoRaWAN specific, but we go talk with developers, see what they want to build, um, and help them actually do that and reach scale. So I've been involved in LoRaWAN in the Lora Alliance for uh, the better for a bit over four years now, which is kind of cool because the Lora WAN specification was not even land at that point. At that point, so you know, every now and then, on LinkedIn, a recruiter approaches you and says, "Hey, Jan, can you tell me how many years of experience you have at Laura WAN?" And I can say all of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and that was kind of cool what Brian was saying about the benefits of Laura WAN um, for them, and that's especially around you can deploy this without touching the network, and you can really easily retrofit buildings. You don't need to run power lines because the energy efficiency of Laura WAN sensors. And that was for us, uh, four years ago, I was working at a telco in Norway, and that was for us the reason to start doing LoRaWAN deployments. It was not even about like building a network for our customers, but it was how can we start getting intelligence from our building. And then once we put the gateways up, you know, we only had two for a campus of 15,000 people that were working there. Once we put the gateways up, we realized that 10 kilometers away from our office in downtown Oslo, we still had reception. And they were like, okay, wait, this is actually a lot bigger than just something that we can do for our own buildings. So I work at ARM, ARM is a semiconductor company. We kind of make um, the internet of things stick. So last year, our partners sold 21 billion chips with our technology inside of it. So when people ask me like, well, when, when are the, you know, the billions of devices coming? And then I can point them at that 21 billion number. That's real devices being sold in the real market. The only thing is not all of them are connected so that's why I hope that everyone here in the ecosystem is going to help me actually achieve that. Um, so when we're looking at IoT devices, we see that kind of 90% of the code is the same. Every IoT device needs you know, an update solution, a way of doing a firmware update on these devices. Every IoT device needs to have a resilient file system because if I'm storing some data, some configuration data, for example, and I reboot my device or power, gets, uh, or, or power is lost and I reboot and all of a sudden my file system is corrupt, that is, you know, that is a big problem. I might need to send a technician into the field and you never want to do that, that's really expensive. Um, so in ARM, ARM is a, is a company where we do everything together with our partners and we figured, well, right now, everyone is doing that 90% over and over and over again and people will start cutting corners. Because this is not something your customer sees. Your customer sees the value add that you bring, but it doesn't see all the, all the menial work that you need to do on that device to make it actually running. So we started developing Embed OS. Um, it's a free open source platform operating system developed with our partners. That is a real-time operating system, so it runs on really small devices. Uh, it contains a portable driver layer, uh, and it contains all the middleware that you need to actually build an IoT device. So right now it's really easy to port. So we have over 150 development boards on our platform. Um, we have um, IT connectivity, so LoRaWAN, of course, that's why we're sitting here. LoRaWAN is a really important one. Um, and we do this together with our partners, so we don't really ship devices ourselves. We make this available and we have our partners. These are a couple of them that are in the Lora Alliance. And they actually help us build this whole operating system. Now, why is that important? We'll get to that in a second. So, this was me four years ago when I was, you know, first of all, doing LoRaWAN. Um, for me, the very first experience that I had with LoRaWAN was actually in the Semtech office in, uh, in Switzerland. And they asked me to like, you know, they wanted to explain to me, I was working for a big telco and they, they were going after that. And they asked me, they wanted to explain to me what LoRaWAN was and, you know, how like a, a deployment looked like. So they invited me to their office and they said, well, upstairs at the top of the building, we have a, we have a base station installation, a gateway. Do you want to see it? And yeah, naturally, that's cool, you know? So we climb up on the building and all of a sudden a seagull starts making diving attacks at us. Like closer and closer and closer. This is like next to the Lake of Geneva. Um, <laughs> so the seagull actually nested next to the base station. So I've never jumped off a building as fast as them. So this was uh, about a month later. <laughs> And LoRaWAN is really great. I mean, the, the range is great, uh, energy efficiency is fantastic, you've heard all about that, but there's one small downside, and that is that you need a lot of stuff to get started. So here I am actually trying to get a, a Curlink IoT station to work, you see the big ropes of cables, you have devices on my desk, screwdrivers, 
as someone who is running the evangelism team and also working on a lower wind stack, this is kind of an unfortunate combination. I don't know if you ever tried to go into a plane and then start unpacking a base station and start unpacking some development boards. The person next to you is getting really, really anxious. The other end, though, I was together with Johan Stocking, the CTO of the Things Network, at a Starbucks in Tokyo, and we started doing exactly the same thing, and they did an even better than I. So, so this is, you know, it's great, but this is not an ideal situation. In addition, because this is RF, there are certain things in a network that are also really hard to test. When I'm at home developing, I have a, a gateway sitting 10 meters away from me behind my bookshelf. So every time my device will always join the network because you know it's really close. Um, but how can I test stuff where my device is moving around? How do I know when my device is on the edge of uh, coverage? How does my device behave in that kind of sense? What happens if I have a device connected to multiple gateways but one of them is connected over 3G is or is losing connection? What happens with my network and quality at that point? So, and this is like typically really hard to do. So we bought a bunch of these, um, these are boxes from Redwood. They're actually at the showcase. And these help us do certification testing. But there's still certain stuff that's really, really hard to test, especially multi-gateway scenarios. So we love LoRaWAN, but during development, I would really like to remove the LoRa part of it, the physical layer. I want to develop without all the pesky gateway and devices, and so I can actually test this stuff in a really easy and fast way. So if we're looking at a typical LoRaWAN topology where we have devices connected to multiple gateways, the gateways all go to the network server, and that deduplicates data and actually handles that. This is the stuff that we would rather run in a virtual environment. Because then the only thing I need is my MacBook, I can just start writing code, and only when I'm happy with how my application is behaving, that is the moment I can actually run it on a physical device. Or only when I'm happy with how my network behaves, even in harsh conditions, that is the moment that I actually run it on a real device. So um, we started doing that. Um, so the benefits here is like one, you can run your application in seconds. So the feedback loop on embedded devices is really, it's quite long. It takes me on average about two minutes to build a ap new application, flash it on my board, and then you know, rejoin the network. Um, it also means that I have full control over the gateway parameters. So I can emulate that a gateway is actually further away than it actually is. I can emulate multiple gateways, but it's still LoRaWAN. I can still verify that it's doing end-to-end -end encryption, that it's hopping over frequencies, that um, duty cycle, because I live in Europe, that duty cycle is still enforced. And the biggest one is that if we're doing it this way, but just simulating the device in the gateway site, is that there's no changes required for the network. So I can talk to any network, to any real network, and they will treat it as a real device. So how we've done that is, so on the left, you'll see the typical topology of, a, of an embedded OS device. So we have an application, we've got a hardware abstraction layer over our physical hardware, we've got our LoRaWAN stack, and then we have a number of peripherals, like a temperature sensor, and we have our radio. The radio sends over LoRaFi to base station, base station runs a packet forwarder and sends it to the network over IP. So we've gotten rid of the uh, bottom two things and replace them with a simulated peripheral, so there can be a temperature sensor where we have a set number of values that's going to read, and a fake radio driver. And what the radio driver does is the moment that it gets the encrypted packet from the LoRaWAN stack, it does the same thing as a gateway would normally do. It just wraps, it just, the gateway just gets the LoRa packet out of the sky, wraps it in an IP packet and gives it to the network. We just skip the getting stuff out of the sky. We just wrap it up in the same packet as the network expects from a gateway site and deliver it directly. So I have a small demo of how, that, uh, how that's actually working. So on the left, we got my consoles running on my, own, on my laptop. And on the right, we have the Things Network. And this is an unmodified version. No one in the Things Network knew that I was doing this experiment. So on the left, I can say, well, I start the simulator. So it starts compiling my application. So this is a normal application that I wrote for an internal training week. Um, at that point, my application starts. The network sees a real join. According to the network, this is a real device that just powered up its radio and started to do a real join. So the network sends a join accept, and I start sending fake data from a fake temperature sensor. Super cool. Um, it's not just that we can do you know, one-way data. You can see actually the device actually joins the network. So we still have the whole end-to-end -end security flow in place. 
but we can also, uh, it still behaves as a LoRaWAN device. So this is a device that I loaded with the EU868 channel plan, so I'm in Europe, and I see, you see like it's actually hopping over the frequencies. I got the channel plan from the network and it's actually hopping over. So you see 868, 300, 867, 500. Um, at some point, we'll actually start realizing that ADR, adaptive data rating, will kick in and it uh, will tell me to start sending faster. It behaves still like a real LoRaWAN device. Um, beside one-way data, we can also send two-way data, so I can relay data back to the network. So I'm saying on port 15, I wanna send a message and I wanna send it as a confirmed message, so I wanna get a confirmation from the device that actually received it. Whenever I send it, during the next receive window, bam, there's my data. So we don't just do basic LoRaWAN here, we do LoRaWAN 1.02, 1.03, 1.01, .1, everything that you would normally do in the embed stack. Um, and stuff that we do here is actually shorten our development cycle. So we've been building a reference implementation of the firmware update specification and 90% of the development of that stack actually happened when I was sitting in Bali <laughs> next to a swimming pool without a physical device or a gateway at hand. And only when we had the whole thing running in the simulator, that's the moment that we actually got a gateway out, started doing development. That took us about three or four days of tweaking on physical hardware to get this running in a real environment. And for me, this is a insane cost saver. Like I am living my life on the road but I still want to work and all these kind of things. And this is for me, like, like I started building this tool for myself, right? And only then we incorporated it within ARM. This is a real cost saver. It can allow you to do verification of your devices for, against a real network before ever even deploying that on an actual device. Um, so let me skip over. This is actually a video of, uh, of doing a full firmware update running in the simulator. Um, so, Recap because I realized that I am the person standing between you and the beer on the other side of the wall. Um, radio is really hard. I absolutely love LoRaWAN from the very first moment that, you know, someone showed me LoRaWAN and I was actually testing this in, a, in an actual environment and realizing that I was getting 10 kilometers of range. I mean, there was nothing in between me and the device, but still 10 kilometers of range, holy sh And that, no, but this is really, like for me, I was doing Bluetooth right before that. I think Bluetooth is really cool, but I'm getting better battery life out of my LoRaWAN sensor, and I'm going like 500 times as far. If you would, t if you'd have told me this five years ago, you, my mind would be blown. And now we just take this as granted. So for me, that's really cool. But radio is really hard while doing the development. So the feedback loop on embedded is really long, but simulation is here to save us.